On episode 351 of the Impulsive Podcast, Bobby Lee made one single joke which completely wrecked the relationship between the three hosts, Logan, Mike, and most notably, George. He's not coming back? Uh -uh. Is he really mad? Is he really mad? Oh, I we have George. beef with a guy? I don't know. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. I didn't do anything wrong. I've For context, Logan and Mike created the podcast back in late 2018, and it's safe to say that these two have always had excellent chemistry. Their personalities work well together, they seem to be pretty good friends, and generally speaking, they exhibit a similar level of status. Status. Keeping a permanent third host, on the other hand, has proven much more difficult. The first 150 episodes featured a third host named Spencer, who eventually left the podcast to move to Hawaii, after which the role went to Logan's childhood friend Mac, who'd then also leave after getting into a fight with Mike over their difference in interests. On episode 219 in September 2020, the next and most recent third host was announced as George Janko, introducing the third co-host of Impulsive, my best friend, George Janko, who was certainly different to the watch previous it, two. Watch George it, was introduced as a more emotional counterpart to Logan and Mike, as he had a reputation for wearing his heart on his sleeve, while Logan and Mike were almost the exact opposite. In addition to this, George was a devout Christian, with discussion about his own spirituality, adding another layer of contrast to what had previously been a non-religious show. Outside of Impulsive, George practiced the art of stand-up comedy, yeah, yeah, I know, although I know. it'd be through comedy that he'd eventually meet his ruin. One thing was glaringly obvious from George's very first first appearance. He simply wasn't on the same level as Logan and Mike. Logan has succeeded with everything from vlogs to Prime, while Mike has overcome his own set of challenges and has proven himself as a fantastic interviewer who meshes well with almost every guest on the show. George, on the other hand, has always felt a little too much like, well, just another guy who Logan met at the gym. Logan, I, I, I met him at a gym. George never had the chance to refine his interviewing skills to the same degree as Logan and Mike, which is only accentuated by his seating position to the right of the guest, making it much harder for George to engage in the conversation. The obvious imbalance between George, Logan, Mike, and usually the guest as well, leaves George with a needy personality and an overpowering desire for approval, leading to over-the-top questions and comments, often producing a clunky viewing experience. I need to know more about you. How did you figure out that like this entertainment world was... Was your calling? That, was it, that's well, what I was gonna say. There's, well, there's, I said it, so. But I was gonna say. <laughs> no, but little, I said it. No, it's it's good. It's no, it's good. I was already funnier than the kids around me, so I was like, I can tell the joke that they're gonna make fun of me, but even better. And I made it about myself. So I was like making fun of myself, like really, really self-deprecated myself. Generally speaking, George's attitude wasn't severe enough to upset any of the guests. However, on episode 346 with Shaquille O'Neal, George was slapped in the face with a bit of a reality check. For the first 11 minutes of the podcast, George didn't say a single word, leading Shaq to confront him about his lack of input. Hold on, yeah. you ain't gonna ask me a question? <laughs> oh, damn. He waits. He likes to wait until Jeez. he's got the Bro, you, listen man, I, I read the Bible a lot when they talk about David and Goliath. I've never seen a giant, and so like I've li I'm literally just, I'm a little taken. You've been sitting over here for 30 minutes and that's all you can freaking say? <laughs> Fucking kidding me. No, he's not gonna say That's the question. Jeez. But I didn't. I, I'm just sitting. I'm. I Are you have, drunk? Is I have one question. Is okay, there any chance you. I could for two seconds put these up so I can hear what's going on? Take them off. You don't have to ask Why the producer. Just take things off. Okay. After making the excuse that he couldn't hear due to his headphones, George sat quietly for another 11 minutes, after which he was scolded again. What the fuck are you doing here? Chat, chat, guys, guys, guys. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a big like humor guy. Like I know everything, but I feel like the only way out of this is uh, trolling yourself and taking it on the chin. There's no other way out. I. That's my take. You just. You do some some dumb shit. You say some some that goes along with it, or like after making the excuse self fire, otherwise you GG. Headphones. George sat quietly for another eleven minutes, after which he was scolded again. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Ask a question. Well, Jeez. Why is He's your partner. He's the newest. You might want to give him his two week notice. I know. I, I'm on the clock. I'm paid to be here. I don't give a fuck. Jeez. You're just sitting here like a bobblehead, dog. Yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't okay. want to interrupt you because no, I, I couldn't ahead. hear. But And it's safe to say that this put a permanent dent in George's confidence. He'd already joked about how difficult it was to be the third host in the past. It's hard to be the third person on a podcast with, you with two say. very vocal <laughs> main hosts. And after the Shaquille O'Neal episode, it was obvious that George's confidence had fallen off a cliff. And then recently I've been just getting really nervous that I'm not doing well enough for the podcast anymore. Only five episodes after Shaq roasted George, Bobby Lee would join the show for Impulsive 351, during which one single joke would send the show into turmoil. The episode began with Bobby taking a little jab at George by suggesting that Mike was cooler. You have everything. Cool friends. So you this, have, this, you have cool friends like this guy? Who am I? Ah. Yet things became a little more contentious when George took it from fun to borderline aggressive. Some people just don't like sucking dick. Now turn around and know the wisdom I give you. Whoa. <laughs> Before displaying more arrogance just a few minutes later. How about you? Uh, first of all, what's my name? Sensing George's clear insecurity, Bobby began to roast George whenever he got the opportunity. You have a girlfriend? Yeah, I believe. <laughs> why, why would you let, why would you do that to a guest on the show? That's like the weirdest shit ever. What? You invite them on a show and you try to, you, to act like you're, you're, you're cooler and you're punching downwards? Brother, they're a guest. You only... What the fuck? Is that your girlfriend? Without fame, you wouldn't get that. Although the ultimate roast would come after George went on a two and a half minute monologue about the struggles he faced in his life. And I don't mean this in a cocky way, but like, dude, this put me on a very strong map and it made a lot of my avenues blow up. So I'm it's very like blessed, but I didn't know I was going to be here. So it's like me, that's... You know? <laughs> it was just a long monologue. He was just waiting. Was and I was, and let me just say something. I loved what you were saying. It was very long. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's yeah, usually, yeah, 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 yeah. That's usually. But you know, I got what you're saying, and you really inspired me, George. <laughs> no, no. And, and you, can I say something? First of all, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not okay, touch my me. Bad, my bad. Yeah, we just need writers to edit that down. <laughs> Like if we had a staff of writers, they'd be like, yeah, we'll cut that, cut that. But I'm sorry, essentially, it was a really good model. Usually when I do my comedy, I don't have writers in the room. I actually write my own stuff. Okay, I can tell. I but um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should get a writer. But my point is... <laughs> For the rest of the podcast, George went into his own little world, except for when Bobby got his attention just so he could roast really him good, again. Huh? All right, George. It's so sad. What I'm saying is, is that oh, when you were talking, we were for that 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually leading George to walk off the podcast, get in an Uber and leave without saying goodbye. The episode received comments such as, it's impossible to call yourself a comedian if you can't handle being slaughtered by other comedians, especially the Captain Bob himself. George tells everyone he's going to be the best comedian alive, but he can't take a joke from the legendary Bobby Lee. It's like a badge of honor. How does he think most comedians communicate with each other? I've always thought George thinks he's funnier than he really is. And when people roast him, he gets super butthurt like this generation. Things became worse for George after this video by Jamari gained well over a million views, leading George to address the criticism in the following episode of Impulsive by arrogantly stating that he enjoyed all the hatred. I love that people were just commenting and getting so steamed. It made me realize like, oh, I really don't care. I want it. I want to be in their heads more. Like, I like it. Love how George is trying to act like he's not heard about this when he had to leave the pod because Bobby Lee out of all people almost made him cry. Dude is a clown. A week after George responded, Logan appeared on Bobby Lee. Chat, I feel like if you're gonna make that statement, chat, you gotta, you gotta really kind of like charge it up really hard and send it with full confidence. Because even then, even though he had like time to process everything and whatever, it still, it still came across as like really insecure. His podcast, I don't know. Tiger Belly, where Bobby took a moment to talk about George's behavior. What he did was unprofessional. Yeah. I was a guest. Yeah. He walked out on a guest. Yeah. If this guy right here walked out on a guest, he would be reprimanded. Before roasting him yet again. If you had walked out, right, <laughs> it would have been like, oh, it's over. But him walking out was just kind of like, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby and Logan then decided that they should get George on a call. Can you give you me his number? You want to settle this right now? Yeah, I'm going to call him right now. Leading Bobby and George to fix their relationship. I want to apologize. Chap, chap. Your, in my opinion, your role in things will change and shift on the fly. And you need to learn how to, to adapt what your, new, what your new role is. On that podcast, it was the guy who was getting shit on, right? Take the role, right? And take that. And that's just, that's just it. Because I think like fighting it is really bad. Nice. You're negative so value, Andy. Behavior on your podcast. Bobby Lee, you shut your mouth. I'm apologizing to you. I left you. You were our guest. 
I want to pull back my apology then. <laughs> because I, 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 I do. Because I literally did not feel sorry. I pulled out of the apology. I don't feel sorry. But I will accept yours, right? Um, and hopefully... You know, when I come back to your podcast, we can make it right. However, it was obvious that the whole thing had caused a serious fracture between George and Logan, becoming most obvious when they get into an almost hour-long argument, only five episodes after the Bobby Lee podcast. I know people that hate me, that treat me better about my faith than you, and you're my best friend. What one that saying? really hurt me is you told me I need a therapist because I believe in Jesus. No, that I one didn't. hurt me. No, I didn't. I mean, well, this guy, this guy showed up to the, to the podcast. It's outside, was it, California? In the sun and sh they're all in t-shirts. This guy looks like he's about to climb Mount Everest. What the Jesus. fuck? I'm no, that I one hurt me. No, I didn't. I said you need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. No, you which didn't. is what, what was, what was you thinking? And I, I don't want to stand down. No, you didn't. What do I need a therapist for then? Jesus isn't doing it for you. And for, I, I for believe what do I need you're, a therapist for? I don't believe you're as emotionally mature as you could be. I'm not emotionally intelligent. Could you could you pick a time and frame? Any day of sure. our life. Here's one. Three weeks ago when you were sitting in that chair, you stormed off this exact podcast because you were upset about something a comedian said. Logan did apologize in their very next episode together. My attitude towards you on that episode and my belittlement of your beliefs was not appropriate at all. True. However, George seemed to realize that his days on Impulsive were numbered as he'd create his own podcast before clickbaiting the first episode with the title, Why George Janko is not on Impulsive, implying that he'd left the group. George used the video to explain that this hadn't really happened. Obviously, I'm only not true. Yeah, I mean, dude, there's a lot of things to attack on somebody, and there are a lot of reasons why there's, there's a certain way. I think going straight to like religion and shit like that, it's just kind of out of pocket. There's usually like a bunch of things you could layer up before that. Like still on impulsive guys. Uh, for any of you guys that are like, oh, they're, they're, they're beef situation, and now he's starting his own like lane. Even going so far as to say their relationship was as good as ever. Me, Logan, and Mike are in a perfect place. Yet it was obvious that this clickbait video had annoyed Logan. I'm just doing this for a couple weeks so then I could leave and clickbait that why I left impulsive. You it's know? Good. that's good. It's a good strategy. <laughs> That'll crush. It's, it's been done. It's been done many yeah. times, and it's and it works. By who? Oh. Well, you can make a real living for yourself, you know? We've seen the model. Resulting in more and more uncomfortable moments on the podcast. You don't give a shit about this show anymore, let's be honest. It's like bands that hate each other that have to get on stage every <laughs> night and play for the audience. Like, yo, let's do our hit song. We don't, like, we have to say That's not true. That's not true. Friends. I like Mike. George, eh. Well, he's about to You don't him. say. <laughs> he's about to. Only three episodes after comparing themselves to a band forced to play together, George disappeared from the show without warning, leading fans to speculate on whether or not he'd been booted. Mike refused to elaborate on the situation when asked by Aiden. I mean, they should have kicked him a long time ago. I mean, that, that shit was garbage. I'm just going to say it. That energy is just so fucking bad. It, it looks so draining and like eggshell type shit. That's just Ross. Why is George not on Impulsive anymore? Is that like a, you don't answer that? No, I, no, I don't want to talk about that. Although only one month later on an episode of Jeff FM with Mike and Tanner Mojo, Tanner accidentally said this. We are the new Impulsive. I'm sorry. We are. It's fine. We're having like a rebrand. Like George is leaving. Like this is it. At around the same point in time, George unfollowed both Logan and Mike on Instagram, which was followed by Impulsive changing their profile picture from this to this, as well as their banner from this to this. All of this had happened silently with no Impulsive put from the hosts. However, on the 26th of April, 2023, George will post a Twitter, I wasn't going to talk, but now I am. Oh no, trust me. Somebody like that who says what he says and who's insecure like that? Oh no, come on. Come on, brother. He was always going to talk. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Some who fucking buys that shit? Behind the scenes. Replies on the post encouraged George to keep the drama private. Yet on the 31st of May, approximately one month later, another tweet was made stating, That's me. I talk about everything. I'm so fuck sorry I can't speak about things. Not my choice. I do love you guys. And for those of you sending me the clip of them talking shit, it's all love. I've already moved on from that toxic environment, confirming that he was no longer on the podcast. The post received replies slammed George such as, mate, you sat there not speaking for 90% of the time. What are we missing? Your silence? To which he'd respond by stating, you think I wanted to be quiet, ha ha ha. Yet this kind of statement is representative of why he's unsuitable for the podcast. He cares way too much about how other people view him. If you're the type of person who gets defensive and feels like you always have to be in the right, you're probably better suited to a Facebook comment section and not a career on YouTube. Despite this, George has seen some success with the George Janko show, Yet Logan hasn't been able to resist roasting George's low view count. I love this outlet and it exists because people watch. And without people watching, I'm, I just have a show like. I mean, what um, I do? Since then, George has stated that he simply wants to distance himself from Mike and Logan. I'm at. 
Ouais. Ouais. Being the right, you're probably better suited to a Facebook comment section and not a career on YouTube. Just well, well, the views look really good too. Well, uh, yeah. it hasn't been able to. Re what is that? Guys, guys, I don't. I Logan hasn't been. I don't like being a viewer kind of Andy. I think it's fucking. I, I think it's just cringe. I, I think analytics are cringe. But I think for a guy leaving the show and whatever on his own. I think this is doing pretty good for a podcast. Oh wait, he gets a question mark. Him. You can't cook him for this one and that one, whatever. That that's pretty good for how consistent it is. This is pretty good. I mean, if you want to speak about it and analytically about the analytics for somebody leaving a podcast, even yes, even if it, they're they're big YouTubers and it's Logan Paul, if you go on your own as this guy who wasn't the big performer, right, and the big guy, this is successful. Yes. Oh, show. Uh, yeah, Logan hasn't been able to resist roasting George's low view count. I love this outlet, and it exists because people watch. And without people watching, I'm. Oh my guys, I was saying 20k, 20k, 20k. Who cares about that one 20k? Who? Get, bro, stop, stop trying to fucking define people, dude, by one bad video because a bunch of other ones. It, it's it's so like, bro, you make the. We talk about insecurity. You make this guy sound like like a fucking absolute alpha Chad of the jungle. That's just an insecure calling out the one bad video at the bottom of the fucking list amongst all the other good ones. People watch. And I mean, this guy looks like, like a fucking, like a, a Chad me. Lord. Um. Since then, George has stated that he simply wants to distance himself from Mike and Logan. I'm at a point right now where I, I want distance from both of them. I don't want anything to do with it, and I just move on. Which seems to be the best possible outcome for everybody involved. Okay. Usually, saying that, uh, you can just kind of like move on and in like a, a more gracious way. Kind of like, you can kind of slip out of that question pretty much, pretty easily without having to say that. Otherwise, it kind of looks like the opposite. Yo, this is X, X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Oh, my voice as well. That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.